All right, I've got a few Benchmade knives I'm gonna be putting up for sale here. So let's go ahead and take a look at them. First one we've got up is a 950 BK 1401 Rift. And this is a Knife Center exclusive with the orange and black G10 scales. Uh, this one does have a black blade. This is a user. I bought this used and I did carry it and use it just a little bit. Um, really though, it's not, it's not really too bad. You're not gonna notice a lot of marks and stuff on it. Uh, these black oxide clips from Benchmade typically come looking like this. So, I mean, there's not much there. There's no significant dings or anything on the scales. You will see some, you know, wear on the black finish on the liners there. See, it's got the orange standoffs. Take a look at the bottom here. A Little bit of wear there at the peaks on there. The black coating on the blade, you'll notice some wear on there, little places, just little little spots, nothing, nothing crazy. Here on the spine, on the edges, you'll see some wear. Up here, notice there's some wear. Osborne designed S30V blade. Um, take a look. Ooh, that edge is sharp. Yeah, I don't feel any like dings, chips, and perfections in the edge at all. It's nice and sharp. So this one should be pretty much ready to go. Um, so if you wanted one of these, maybe that's uh, you you won't mind taking out and using this. This would be a good one. Axis lock, of course, is is good. There might be just a little bit of blade flex there, like I can kind of feel it moving, but it's not, there's nothing sloppy there. I wouldn't say there's any blade play there at all, vertical or sideways, so. Good solid knife, good looking one too. I've got two of them, that's why I'm getting rid of one of them. And for this guy, I need to show the centering on him. I would say the centering is pretty much spot on. Let me look off camera a little bit. It might favor this non-clip side just a little bit, but, uh, it's it's pretty it's pretty darn good. Next one we've got here. This is a 928 Osborne Proxy. I do believe this was the last one that Warren Osborne designed for Benchmade. Um, if you're not familiar with this, it is a titanium frame lock flipper, uh, which was I think maybe the first for Benchmade. I don't know that for sure. So it has a solid G10 scale over here. Uh, this is one piece that makes up this scale and the backspacer and then the titanium frame lock on this side. I bought this as like new in box. I have never carried it or used it. I've just used it in some photographs. Uh, beautiful flipping action on it. It's on bearings, so it better be. Extremely solid lockup. I don't feel anything there. Blade steel. We have 20 CV. This is the one everybody, or lots of people want to see. This is an M390. Um, so here is your lockup on there. And if you don't know, this nut, this lockup, this lock bar interface is actually like a hex nut or something, a six-sided nut. And you can take it out and adjust it to adjust the lockup on it, which is kind of neat. Uh, Benchmade had done something similar on like the uh, 755M uh, micro pocket rocket, I think is what it was called, um, except it was a hex stop pin, so you could adjust that to adjust your lockup. Um, but yeah, this thing is is like new in box. I just I don't see anything really to point out on it. There's your centering, we showed the lockup, and it does come with the factory box, which includes the little uh, microfiber drawstring bag. Next knife we've got here, so this one, is a 581 Barrage. This is another Warren Osborne knife. This one is in M390. I bought this knife used, um, and I did carry it and use it for quite a while. Uh, never any abuse or anything to it, but I did carry it and use it. There might be just a little bit of side-to-side -side play on this one. Um, and you, I, I really haven't messed with the pivot much on this. So what I did do, and this does not come with a factory box, it comes with a Benchmade warranty box, I de-assisted this knife. I'm not a big fan of assisted knives. So I took it apart, de-assisted it. All the parts for that come with the knife. Um, the switch, that's a little button that like, locks it um, uh, and keeps it from flipping open and the spring and everything is all in there. Um, and I can't remember 
if this was the factory clip or not, but it'll include a deep carry clip and this this clip the, uh, uh, the, with a black oxide finish. You can see there's some wear to this clip on the edges and stuff. Typically these clips come with some wear on them from the factory. It always looks like this one has a little more than that. Uh, but yeah, there is a little bit of side-to-side -side play, but you can take these bolsters off and then your pivots underneath and, and you can mess with the pivot and stuff on it. Um, but yeah, just a little bit. Uh, very nice action on this one, just flies open, uh, probably because there is a little bit of play there, um, so you can adjust that to your liking. Uh, M390 steel, and like I said, I have carried this one and used it, and I've maintained it on a sharp maker. The edge feels good to me, I don't feel any nicks, chips, stings, burrs, anything like that. Um, so this one's ready to use. Uh, this is a great knife. It's a little large, um, but it's a beautiful knife, and it's really nice. Centering. The centering does favor the non-clip side just a little bit, and that may adjust uh, with, with messing with the pivot too, but that's as it stands right now. Next knife we have here. This is a Benchmade 746 alum not design knife. 154 cm steel. I bought this. Uh, it was said it was a light user, I believe. I really don't see any anything to point out significantly on this one. Um, you know, expect to see, like, there's a little mark there on the G10. Um, I've never carried this or used it. I just thought it was a neat-looking knife and bought it. But, you know, expect to see some light signs of use on it, maybe, or carry. You know, that may just be imperfections in the, in the uh, G10. So if that is G10, I don't, that feels soft. It almost feels like a micarta. Blade. I think all you're really going to see on there is maybe some dust specks and some fingerprints. I'm just not really seeing anything to point out on this guy. Edge on it is good. No defects, chip stings, burrs, rolls. Feels plenty sharp. So it's a neat little knife. Just trying to thin out the collection. Centering looks like it favors this side a little bit, the non-clip side. Solid though, I don't feel any side to side play on it or anything. So, and not a factory box, it's a warranty, a Benchmade warranty box. And the last Benchmade we've got here, once again, no factory box, this is just a Benchmade warranty box. This is an older knife, and I this was one of my first uh, Benchmades when I first started getting into knife collecting. This particular knife, uh, this is a seven or I'm sorry, a 670 Apparition. And I actually had three different versions of this knife. And this, I'm, I've got one more. I'm, I'm thinning out my collection of duplicates. Uh, this is another Osborne design knife. Um, I did carry and use this one quite a bit. Um, the edge though on it feels good. I don't feel any chips or dings or anything. It feels pretty darn sharp too. Um, I think I might have sent this one in for Life Sharp and then never used it again. Um, so I think I think that's what I did with this. So we'll take a look at the lockup. All of my apparitions always favor this side, the clip side here, with blade centering. Every one of them looks like that. So uh, if you don't know, this is actually an assisted knife, but it does not use a uh, like a coil spring or or leaf spring or, or any kind of wire spring. It has a torsion bar in the back. I'm going to open it slowly. That's what that is back there, it's a torsion bar. So it's putting pressure on that blade, and once it reaches a certain point, it just flies open under, under the torsion bar, force from the torsion bar. Now, you can remove that. There's a little fastener right here. You can actually take that torsion bar out and just make this a normal thumb stud opener, which I really like. Um, but So this one was a user, and you've probably noticed on the blade, someone, a previous owner, had this etching. I don't know who did that, if it was Benchmade or what. It looks like it's a sword, maybe? Futuristic space warrior sword or something? Maybe a cross? I, I don't really know what it is. It's on both sides, though. 154 cm steel on this. Uh, so we showed the centering, the lockup. Solid. I don't feel any side to side or vertical play on it, but neat knife that's discontinued. Um, and like I said, I like it enough. I want to keep one in my collection, but um, this is my number two. So 
there are some bench mates for sale. Got a few more Benchmade folders put up for sale here. First one we're going to take a look at is a 913 Nitrous Striker D2 Steel. Uh, this knife does have the factory box. You can see it marked there. And it's got some uh, the pamphlet in there. So this knife I bought as a user. Um, I have never carried it or used it, but um, when I got it, the blade edge was pretty messed up on it. Um, so I did, I worked on it on my uh, Sharp Maker and really helped it. It's It's got a pretty darn decent edge on there now, if I do say so myself. Um, I would I would just take it and use it because um, it had a pretty badly rolled edge. But now I don't feel any burrs, chips, dings, anything like that in it. Uh, it's pretty sharp so the this is a, this is good to go the edge is good to go on this you know you may want to do something to it but um, I wouldn't I'd just take it and use it now this d2 blade you're gonna see some staining and stuff on it okay right there around the thumb stud because this was a user faint scratches there and the staining like I said the edge on it though Edge on it's good. Now, you can see the marking of a 913. Some staining there. Uh, G10 scales on this. I'm not really seeing much to point out. Looks like there's a little mark maybe up there by that pivot screw. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with this knife, this has uh, the nitrous assisted opening so there are actually leaf springs cut out of the liners um, so you fold this and you can see the leaf springs and that little roller come up there so you just get it started and those leaf springs push downwards and force the blade out and this one does have that hex stop pin it looks like so that you can adjust the lockup on the knife by rotating that um, that's present on a couple of Benchmade knives. Let's go ahead and take a look at the lock up here, liner lock. And the centering, while we're thinking about it. Ooh, centering looks pretty darn good on that. Good solid lock up. I don't feel any play on it though. Uh, just be aware it's a user, like I've shown the stains on the blade. Here's some marks on the clip you'll see. But nothing... Nothing significant. I mean, the staining on the blade and, and it looks like the marks on this clip are the most significant items to point out. Good user knife. Very light because it's got these cutouts in the liners um, for the leaf springs and stuff. So it's a very lightweight knife, especially for its size. So there we go. Second one we have up here is a full-size Crooked River. It does not come with a factory box. It just has a bench warranty box here. I bought this knife uh, from a guy as a light user, and I've never carried it. Uh, I love the knife. It's great, but probably I'll end up getting a smaller version, the, the mini Crooked River. Um, I'm just kind of, honestly, I'm just kind of waiting for them to come out in the G10. I prefer the G10 on it to the wood, and I think the mini only comes with wood right now. Um, there's not a whole lot to point out on this knife. Um, the It looks like the orange is a little bit blackened, probably from hand oils or something, just from being carried and handled. Um, the clip, that may be wear from carry, but these Benchmade Black Oxide clips often look like that from the factory, so uh, nothing, nothing really significant there. This is uh, S30V steel. The edge on it looks like factory edge to me with their crazy grinds. I don't feel any any defects, chips, burrs, dings, anything like that. Um, I think I have. I think the edge maybe had a burr on this when I got it, and I probably stropped it. I, I probably did uh, Sharp Maker Ultra Fine Stones and then stropped it, but I it feels pretty darn good to me now. Sharp with with no real discernible defects or anything. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I did that because you can kind of see a little shininess there on the very edge where I would have hit that on the ultra fines and then the strop. So good edge on it now, though. Um, 
just not much really to point out on there. 15080 is a model number. You can see a little bit of shininess there on the edge from being worked on just a little bit. But no real scratches or, or any, anything like that. So, yeah, good user. Uh, if you're looking for one of these, a larger knife, take a look at the centering on it. Centering does favor this non-clip side, but you can see it's not rubbing or anything. Pretty typical for Benchmade's nowadays. Now, these last two, I'm going to take a look at them together because they're very similar. Now, you may be looking at these and saying these are not Benchmade's. Well, Benchmade made the Bradley Cutlery frame lock knives, and I believe they're volley songs too. They're butterfly knives. Uh, but I know these were made by Benchmade. I have sent, um, let's see, this one I sent to Benchmade for warranty work, and you can see there are some spots on here. That is oil from the factory. They replaced this whole lock side scale on this knife because when I bought it, I bought it used, it had terrible lock rock. So um, they replaced that whole lock side scale for me and now it, it feels solid. So um, this knife, let's go ahead and take a look around it. I, I gotta kind of orient myself here. The most significant stuff you're gonna see on this knife is this. See how there's a dent and, and there's actually like a, um, it's caved in, the tip of that thumb stud is. Benchmade no longer carries these thumb studs. They don't have any in stock, which sucks. Uh, they did send me one for, I think it was a 761. They thought it might fit, it didn't. Um, so do be aware, that's probably the most significant damage you're gonna see on this. Uh, if you're not familiar with these Bradley aliases, um, he wanted to make a competitor to the Sabenza that was more reasonably priced. Um, this was known as the Sabenza Killer. And which one is still in production? Not the Bradley. So anyway, sorry, got sidetracked there. S30V steel, new lock side on this one. Made in US by Benchmade. Let's take a look at the edge. There's a couple little places where my fingernail catches on there, but nothing crazy. No crazy chips or anything in it. Uh, good, it's sharp. So probably if you're buying this, though, you're buying it for a collectible, I would imagine. So take a look at the lockup and the centering. Centering, let me take it off camera. Centering seems to be pretty spot on on this guy. I haven't messed with it. Oh, there's no play in it. Yeah, it's solid all the way around. So um, centering seems pretty good on it. Action's pretty good. Um, good collectible. And this, uh, you can see there are some faint marks on the pocket clip on this one. A little, maybe a scratch right there. Yeah, my fingernail catch is there and then some rub marks. But all in all, I mean, lock side's brand new on it from the factory. So I've never used it or carried it since they did that. And then the uh, non-lock side looks pretty darn good too. So there you go. It does come with a factory box. The... 17600 alias 1. That's the bigger one. They had an alias 2. I had two of those. I already sold them. Uh, this does come with the factory box and all the little paperwork and stuff there. So there's that one. The other one is the exact same knife. Just a second, uh, second example of it. Uh, so it, it also has the factory box. Now in here, the, the other one did not have this, but this one has the uh, drawstring bag and the paperwork down there in the bottom. Take a look at this guy. This one, okay, yeah, this one is, is a, I bought this as a user and you can see some marks on it. There's a little mark there, some marks there. Clip looks pretty good on this one. I don't really see any. S30V, US made. Uh, the thumb stud on this one is in better shape. It's got some wear and stuff, but it's in better shape than the other one. But the scales have some little marks and such on them. Nothing crazy, but it's there, so be aware. The blade on this one also has some faint, looks like there's just some faint marks on it. Fingerprints that I'm smearing all over it too. edge on this one a couple little like rougher spots like right in here I mean they're 
they're just it's so faint like a strop's gonna take that out uh, normal stuff nothing crazy no chips rolls dings anything like that so take a look at the lockup on this one centering now on this one it favors that clip side you can you can readily see that yeah, yeah but it's not it's not rubbing there's plenty of clearance there Let me get just plain white back there yeah plenty of clearance there and it flies open oh man that's solid damn that's solid okay yep flies open it's good so once again i imagine that you're buying this as a collectible not as a user but that is completely up to you um so there's a couple of uh, knives that you don't really see come up all that often. Uh, those Bradley aliases. You get yourself a Savenza killer while you can. I do have one Benchmade fixed blade for sale. So what we have here is a 140BK D2 Nimravis. Uh, this is the larger knife and it does have the D2 blade steel. Now the story with this knife is this was bought as a gift for me um, before I deployed to Iraq the first time. Um, I did carry this on a backpack. It was on a shoulder strap on a backpack. Um, I did use it very minimally. I, I typically reach for the folder in my pocket, though. This had very, very minimal use. Um, I don't even think I've ever messed with the edge on it. Edge still feels good. There are no, you know, dings, chips, burrs, anything like that on it. Um, but this is the, most of these you th see, I think, are 154CM. This is the D2 version with the BK finish and a non-serrated blade. I prefer non-serrated blades. And it has the aluminum scales. Um, so... We'll take a quick look around the knife. Um, do expect to see some signs of carry. You'll see, so I had a lanyard on this at one time, so, so you're getting some like wear to the black coating there. You'll see some dust. This is dust from being carried around on a backpack in a rack. So you'll see on the sheath, there's, there's dust. Because I don't know, if you've ever been to the Middle East, it's very dusty there. And I just use the Molly attachment to keep it on shoulder strap but honestly I mean this this knife's in really good shape um, I'll call it a light user you will see some most of these marks are just from being carried around oops you can see I got I rubbed my fingernail on it and it just made a line on there on this uh, coated aluminum scale but not really much to point out on there just be aware that it was carried around very used very minimally though uh, it does come with the factory box and it has this is the uh, Part, so you can attach this to the sheath and hang it from a belt if you're not using the molly attachment. It has the leg tied with it. Factory box and all that. So um, I've got. I really am a fan of the Nimravis knives. I have several of them. Uh, this is just one that I don't. Uh, I don't carry or use anymore. So I'm gonna put that one up for sale.